Hi, so this is the second video which relates to water. Um, so this was the last slide that we ended on. Um, and it says that an environmental impact study or assessment should be done um, whenever you want to construct a canal or pipelines uh, or construct dams or underground water if you want to extract extract that so um, then if you want to construct a dam um, your dam needs to be classified and here we can see the different ways in which the dam is uh, classified and the parameters that they use so they take two main things into consideration uh, the possible loss of life so that's a pll or the pot potential economical loss so that's the financial loss um, which could possibly happen if your dam wasn't uh, built properly so in order to uh, measure these parameters they'll look at two things mainly and that is the um, height of the dam wall as well as the amount of water in the dam so if i can uh, draw a dam something like this and so the two parameters they look is this height of the dam wall uh, five meters as well as the amount of water which is 50 cubic meters and then you can see uh, this is the table that they used they'll look at the height of the wall and then this dam will be placed into one of three groups category one two and three um, and if it is a category two or three dam then you need an approved engineer to design your dam or approve the design of the dam so in this lecture we'll mainly look at two things uh, dams and underground water sources so if we're looking at dams or earth dams um, they are used by producers as a place to store water and then to use that water later so when a dam is constructed the topsoil and vegetation needs to be removed um, so that's here at the top and the main reason for this is just because the organic material um, isn't really compacted easily so it can cause damage and then a cut off farrow is required so that's here and the reason why this is important is because your dam usually has uh, seepage so some of the water will leak out and this cutoff furrow what it does is it collects the the water and then it transports it away so that the water doesn't leak through the dam wall and cause a lot of damage to your dam wall um, so the soil is placed in layers and then compacted and it's used by done by using a manual compactor or vibrator compactor um, you need 30% clay in your full material and then an outlet pipe should be installed. So it's usually through this wall like that. And so this outlet pipe is used to transport the water from the dam um, to you, where you want to transport it to your crop or etc. So here's a picture of dam wall so here's the crest at the top your furrow and then something like this will be your outlet that transports the water out of the dam um, and there's another picture with your dam wall over here and then that is your outlet pipe so uh, the capacity sufficient capacity to carry over to the following season so you obviously want enough water in your dam in order to provide water for your next season still. So planning your water usage is very important. Then depositing of salt. Um, whenever your water comes into the dam, um, like something like this, and um, it's usually not clear, clean water. So it brings a lot of mud or salt and you need to have a dam that's big enough for when this mud or salt settles at the bottom, 
you still have enough space. Uh, you need a small surface area. Um, so if this is first example of a dam, and this is an ex another example, um, these two dams have almost the same amount of water inside of them, except that in the second example, you lose a lot less water due to evapotranspiration because um, the surface area is a lot less than in the first example. So maintenance, uh, quarterly routine inspection. So that's something that the producer can do um, himself. And this is a list of checkpoints that the producer needs to go through. And then every five years, a compulsory um, inspection by law that the um, farmer needs to contact someone to come to the dam and actually do an inspection. Um, and so what they'll check is differential subsidence on the crest. So that's over time, this crest can get smaller and it has a leeway of about 1% that it can get smaller. So someone needs to check that to make sure that um, it doesn't get so small that water starts flowing over the top. Slope erosion, uh, that's maybe somewhere like here where due to rain, you have trouble with your um, slope that starts getting smaller and that could lead to your dam collapsing or your dam wall collapsing. Bulging against the slope, which is usually a sign that your dam wall can collapse soon. Holes and tunnels by burrowing animals. So that's just animals weakening the, the dam wall, as is the same with um, ant or termite activity. Uh, and the same with vegetation. Vegetation, usually if you have uh, trees that are growing on the dam wall, their roots can cause holes in the dam wall, which then leads to uh, your dam wall collapsing. And underground water. So underground water is supplemented by the rain. And especially if you are in a climate that doesn't have a lot of water, uh, and you desperately need water, you'll start looking at using your underground water. So this is part of the high hydrological cycle. Um, and what happens is if this is your soil and this is an impermeable layer underneath that. So if this is the impermeable layer, The rain foil falls on the on the soil uh, surface and it seeps through these upper layers until it gets to this bo bottom part. And because it cannot go through the impermeable layer, it accumulates at the bottom. And so what happens is uh, in some environments, when a large amount of water has accumulated at the bottom, you get something like an aquifer. And this is something that you want to access if you have one of these impermeable layers and aquifers on your farm. Uh, so the way that you can access that is through a borehole. So the borehole is then drilled into the soil um, like this and then used to extract this water and use it on the farm. So if you have enough rainfall or your geological profile of your soil is such that water actually accumulates, you can have a lot of water at the bottom. So borehole testing, boreholes are unstable over long periods. And what that just refers to is that you aren't really sure ever how much water you have at the bottom. Uh, so you need a consultant if you want a borehole on your farm uh, to come to your farm and uh, what they do is they will look at the electrical resistance underneath the soil and that's how they determine um, whether or not you might have water underneath the soil and they'll drill a borehole and then they'll do a drilling test. So in this drilling test, they'll look at the amount of water, so the volume over a given time that they can extract out of the soil and that'll give them the flow rate. 
so after they've gotten this flow rate you as a farmer can test it again except this time in an hour test um, you will drill, drill at a a rate that's a lot less than the rate that the consultant drilled at and that's how you start figuring out at what speed your borehole um, should run and so um, these are the minimum requirements for boreholes and then if you've done this um, if you've checked at the rate at which you can extract water uh, make sure to run at a capacity of maximum 60% of this first initial test that was done by the consultant in order to make sure that you are not using the water at an excessive rate because this water also needs to be uh, supplemented with extra water due to rain or uh, maybe from higher lying areas where water is moving under the soil surface. So it's always important when you have a borehole to keep the records um, of a description of the soil profile, the date that the drilling and installation, pump test results, volume of pumped water, position of other boreholes as well. And so to keep all of this data is always important um, if you have a borehole. And that is it for this video.